to see many of your uh, familiar faces again. It's good to be here. Uh, every time I come here, I'm reminded of the pastor. Uh, Y'all don't know what relationship me and the pastor have, right? Well, he was the one who married Joy and I. So we have a special bond there that we're going to take to heaven. Amen? Amen. And uh, we also have another bond that uh, we're God's children. Amen. Amen? And that's what the gospel is all about. Go and make disciples. Okay, we're in the midst of a war. And uh, as the wise man says in the book, it says there's a time for everything. A time to speak, a time to be silent, a time to kill, a time to not kill. But today it is a time to praise. Amen. Amen. God says to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. I couldn't think of no better uh, name that I use on the internet than Sabbath man. That's my username. And it's dear to me because the Sabbath is the seal of God. You take the seventh day Sabbath out of his law, anyone can be God. But the word says the true God has made heaven and earth. That's right. That's right. And that's why we as seven events repeat for in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. That's right. So if you run across any of these other gods out here, you ask them, you know, what part of this creation did you create? Come on now. <laughs> if they didn't create anything, you know the rest of the story. Amen. So we're going to have a good time here in the Lord, and we're going to talk about his goodness and what God says we should and should not do. Okay? God has standards. Amen? And it says those that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that not casually seek him, but diligently seek him. You know, like when you, you want a house or a car or a wife or something, you, you want it diligently. Amen. Well, God wants to be diligently searched out That's right. because he is the Savior. They said they shall call his name Jesus. That's right. For he's going to do what we couldn't do. That's right. And that is to save us from our sins. Right. So before we go forward, we're going to have a word of prayer. And then we're going to do a little house cleaning, and then we're going to get into the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Is that okay? Let us pray. Father God, we have gathered here on your day, at your time. We know that the Holy Spirit is here because he's a representative of Jesus. Amen? And so he's going to guide us into our truth. And my prayer is that, you, that your people will hear his voice and not mine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I was amazed as I listened to the uh, story about uh, American World Radio because that's dear to me. You might don't know it. But for 31 years, I did the same thing. I had a radio broadcast in New Jersey where I'm from. And there was an open forum. And we shared God's message with whoever would hear. Amen. Okay? And that was in the Camden, Philadelphia area. Then we went to Worldwide Christian Radio out of Nashville, Tennessee. Shortwave. All over. And I'm telling you, there are people out there who are looking for the truth. Amen. Then we went to Radio East Africa. And we preach the word. And I wish I had some of those letters here to share with you. Those letters will make you appreciate that you have the opportunity to know Jesus. I mean, they are just so powerful, they will just humble you down. It says, wow, but for the grace of God. And so, you know, that, that was real touching to me, is that uh, 
God's work is going on. And so God has a message for us today. And uh, we're going to start with Psalms 23. It is so dear to me. And uh, we're just going to be sheep. You know, there's, there's two animals that God mentions. Well, there's more than that, but basically two. They are sheep. They are meek. They follow the shepherd wherever he go. That's right. And they don't make a lot of confusion. That's right. Then the other counterpart of the sheep is goats. Come on, man. <laughs> goats are always bucking. Goats get out of the pen. I mean, they're just a little different. And Jesus said when he comes, he's going to put sheep on one side and goats on the other side. <laughs> because there's a difference. God wants his people to be sheep. In other words, they follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. And that's what I am. I am a dumb sheep. But I'm dumb enough to know that if Jesus lead, I shall follow. And so that's what we want to be here because we have a job to do. But we can only do it the way Jesus has laid out in the scripture. Because it says, thy word is truth. If it ain't in here, it's not truth. So we, you, have, you have your Bibles, right? Let me see how many Bibles you got. Hold them up. Let me see them. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. I tell this every place I go. This is the word of God. And the Bible says, it is a lamp unto my feet. It prevents me from stumbling. It prevents me from getting lost. It's a lamp to guide me where I need to go in the name of the Lord. Amen. So we need this to guide us. Amen. If we don't have that, we'll be stumbling. We'll be making a lot of mistakes that could be costly. Now, there's another thing that goes with this. It's called, in the Bible, you have a lamp, which is the Bible. And then you need oil with your lamp. So let me explain how that works very simply. You can read this Bible. But if you don't have no oil in your lamp. You won't be enlightened. That's right. The oil is the Holy Spirit. That's right. Come on now. A lot of people read the Bible, but they're not enlightened. Because they don't have no oil with their lamp. Amen. So you got to have both. You got to have the word, which is a lamp. And then as the word of God says, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. So you got to focus on the he as I share with you the word. I'm going to share with you the lamp. But it is the oil that you want to keep your eye on. The oil is the Holy Spirit. So, we are sheep. And the text of Psalms 23 says, The Lord is... What? My shepherd. My shepherd. Amen. Amen. He does what? What does he do? Protects. No, according to Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What does? You can read it right up on the screen. What does it say? Elder, read that. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Go ahead, continue to read. Go ahead. Okay, what else? He maketh me a lie on a green pasture. Okay, he maketh me or us to lie down in green, in, in green pastures. Why? He leadeth us beside the still waters. That's right. Continue to read. Go ahead. He restoreth our soul. He restoreth our soul. We are here to be what? Restored. 
It's, it's, it's like a car. Right? When you run empty, you have to fill up. That's right. right? So we're going to fill up on the Sabbath day. Go ahead, Elder. He leads me into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That's right. He's always going to lead us right. Now, even though you would think that most people know this, but there are times you must repeat it. That's right. God is never going to lead you wrong. Okay? Because sometimes we, you know, we question God. But it says God doesn't lie. If he's going to take care of you, if he's going to lead you in path of righteousness, he's going to do exactly what he says. But you can't be a goat. A goat, you know, a goat are always bucking, you know, one around, one buck. When God says something, some people get like goats. They want to buck. Well, what, what, what about this? One? Why can't, you know, you know, they're bucking. But the sheep just follow the shepherd wherever he goes. There's a difference, and I want to make, make sure that you see the difference. There's a difference between God and man. You and I are erring mortals. Okay? You know, there was a story in the Bible where Job thought he was, you know, on the same level with, with uh, God. And God says, Job, where were you at when I placed the sun in the sky? Where were you at when I put the fish in the sea? You know what I'm saying? So there are times we kind of get out of hand. God is different from humans. OK, and that's why he carries the title Alpha and Omega. He knows the beginning and he knows how it's going to end. You and I guess every day and some of us are fearful because we don't know the future. Amen. But that's why God gave prophecy. He wants us to know tomorrow's news today. So if you want to know tomorrow's news today, it's right here. Okay? And so we're going to see. God has given us a promise. I, I love Psalms 23. Though. See, this, this is going to come right home. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of what? Death. Of death. I will fear some evil? No. Anybody know what no means? Is that absolute? I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This is one I like. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Now you got to think about this one. You ever seen a table? You ever went to someone's house and you look at the kitchen and they're preparing the table? This is a parable. Why do you think they're preparing the table? Why do you think they're preparing the table? What goes on the table? Food. Food. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of our enemies. Now, you and I, as Seven Adventists, know we heard a lot about this mark of the beast, yeah. right? About Sunday keeping. Yeah. Well, God is going to prepare the table in the midst of our enemies. Right. It's not about Sunday keeping. Yeah. It is the Sunday keeping that's going to tell us about Sabbath keeping. God is going to let the evil take the forefront so they can see the opposite, which is the truth. That's how God's going to bring the seventh day Sabbath. And he has called us. Our name is Seventh Day Adventists. And we know that Jesus is coming. Ready or not, he is coming. And we want to tell as many people as we can that ready or not, he's coming. But he has given us time. He's not going to come 
before this gospel of the kingdom is preaching to all the world for a witness and then the end shall come. So we're going to see it. Psalms 23 kind of sets the groundwork for us. But also it says God has given men what? Warning, Warning of coming judgment. Those who had faith in his message. What happened? For their time. And who acted out their faith in what? Obedience. Obedience to his commandments escaped the judgments that fell upon the what? Disobedient and what? Any message, you must take it serious. That's right. Let's say, just for conversation, I said, there's a lion in this room. You ain't going to do anything if you don't have no faith in the message. But if the message is true, it could be costly. Right? But for you to act appropriately, you must have faith in the message. Okay? So we laid that groundwork. For you to act appropriately... Hello? You must have faith in the message or it could be costly. Now we're here because we believe in God. And we all know that favorite text in John 3.16. I'm going to repeat it because it needs to be repeated. And I'm going to put it in its proper context. You might didn't know it. But there are three that bear witness in heaven. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you right at the beginning, you can search until eternity. You can't figure out God. You, you can't figure out God because that's why he's God. Amen. But still, God wants us to know what he's doing. He says, for God the Father... So loved us, this world, that he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believe, that believe have faith. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Believe it or not, that's the, almost the gospel right there. There's another good part we need to add to it. 17. For God... The Father sent not his son Jesus to the world to condemn the world, but that you and I might have an opportunity to be saved. It's all about salvation. That's why we're here. But we must get it right. And as you know, or should know, or should have known, there's a lot of people that say they are Christians. But the Bible says, if anyone say they know him and don't keep his commandments or don't do what he says, they are liars. Oh, you read it. You read it straight from the word. That's right. So you have to be careful today. There's a lot of people who says, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Jesus even warned us. He says, many not a few, many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. So, with that said, all roads don't lead to heaven. Okay? According to the word, it says there's only one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. There's only one Jesus, one God the Father, and one Holy Spirit. And we must meet them in the order that God says. Now we had a problem on earth that we probably didn't know about. And that was sin. The three in heaven said, let us make man in our image. And they did. They made Adam. And, you know, then they made all these animals and everything. Animal. 
Adam named them all. But there was no creature like him. So God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit said, let us make him a help me. He need a help me. And he made another one in the image of God, and, and she's called what? Woman. Woman. Help me. I got, I got one of those help me. Raise your hand. That's my wife. That's the one that I told you, Pastor Mary does. Now, in Acts 17, 26, it said, God has made of all nations of one blood. And this is the point I want to focus on. And has determined their habitation before the time. I didn't know. And you didn't know. That on this date. I would be here in Arizona. God determined that I should be here. From, Arizona, from New Jersey. And God determined that you should be here. There's a time for everything. And your time is now. God wants you to hear the message that he has impressed upon my heart. I'm not the author of the Bible. God is the author of the Bible through his prophets. But we are here for such a time as this. We have a job to do. But to do it, we must get truth. Because God is in charge. And he won't accept nothing but truth. Amen. So, you got to have faith in the message that comes from the word of God. Let's see what else we have. God has always given men of the warning judgment. So, God won't do anything unless he tell you what he's going to do. Amen. That's fair, right? Amen. None of us like surprises, right? God wants us to know tomorrow's news today. Jeremiah 46, 11 says, go into Gilead and take bomb, O virgin daughters of Egypt. In vain does thou use what? Many medicines. There is no healing for who? This is what the word says. Now, we, we just established this truth, right? Jeremiah 30, 13, are you writing it down? You're following it? Don't, don't just listen to me. And don't write it down if you don't have a Bible and go home and see if it's so because you're only going to have a lamp. You must have oil with your lamp. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Jeremiah 30, 13. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. In other words, man has no healing medicines. That's, hey, that, really, that, that removes a lot of fear off a lot of people because people don't know if there's healing medicine or no healing medicine. They don't know. But if you have truth, you'll know. Amen? Amen. Exodus 15, 26, it says... If thou wilt, what? Diligently do what? If thou wilt diligently, what? Listen to any voice. The voice of the Lord thy God. Do that which is what? Right in his sight. What else? And we'll what? And we'll what? I like this word. It says, give ear. Y'all ever seen someone talk and they do this? That's called giving ear. It don't mean you have to believe it, but just listen. That's fair, right? Give ear unto what God has to say, to his commandments, right? And God has made a promise. He says, I will put none of what? These diseases upon you. And you know why? God's disciples 
were told to go, preach the gospel, listen to this carefully, heal the sick, raise the dead. In evangelical circles, what they say sometimes, Christians are missing their mark. They have a high calling, but somehow we missed it. I read in the Bible that they would lay the sick down in the street, and as the disciples walked by, the shadow would heal them. Hey, we all must go to a higher level. We are living below where God wants us. It's called the POA. They call it power of attorney. I used to use, I used to use it all the time when I was a little boy. I used to tell my brothers and sisters what to do. You know how I did it? I would go outside and say, Mom said, do such and such a thing. I was a nobody. But when I said, Mom said, or Dad said, they moved. So Jesus says, when you go forth, you need to do things in my name. Jesus said this, Jesus said that. That's called POA, power of attorney. And the time is coming that we as Christians Let's go to the next level. We've been down in the valley a long while. The devil's been chasing us. Now it's time that we chase the devil. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leopard. Oh, I know. Cast out devils. Yes. The time is coming. The God's people. Here's the, here's, here's the caveat. When they are right, they're going to do what Jesus said they should do. Because if you ain't right, the devil's going to say to you, hmm, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> who are you? The devil know when we are right and when we're wrong. So don't fool with the devil if you ain't got it right. You follow me? But God wants his people to go to a different level. It also says the Lord has two benefits. When I used to work, I used to say, what are your benefits? It says, bless the Lord, all my soul, Psalms 103, 1 to 3. And forget not his benefits. He said he, his benefits are, he will what? He will forgive all your iniquities. That's John 3.17. For I said not Jesus to condemn you. No. God came for people like you and me. In case you didn't know. He came for the sinner. Amen. We are sinners. That's why we do what we do. We love to do it. But God wanted to convert us. He wanted to change us. He wants to forgive our iniquities and he wants to heal what? All our diseases. That's benefits. God needs Christians to show the benefit. You know, they, they have this saying, crime pays, obedience also pay. Amen. And God is waiting for some obedient people so he can show the benefits. Okay? I worked on a lot of jobs and nobody told me of the benefits. I never got those benefits. Are oh, you following me? There are many Christians who are Christians but don't know God's benefits. Either God has benefits or he don't. Either this is truth or it's not. Either there's a God or it isn't. Ready or not, he is coming. And we read some, some good texts in there. Let me just share a few with you. 
1 Thessalonians 4, 13, I love it. Brethren, I would not have you be ignorant concerning those that sleep, that ye sorrow not as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so will Christ bring with him. When Jesus comes back, he has taken some Christians back to heaven. By this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and my mother, maybe your mother, father, I don't know. But it says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's our destiny. That's our goal. The Lord is coming ready or not. He wants everybody here and everybody in the world to be ready. We have a message to go out and say, yes, the advent of the Lord is near. Get ready. He's coming with thousands and thousands and 10,000 times 10,000 of angels. And there's a time for everything. One day, God is going to say, it is done. It's over. The gospel is finished. We want to be ready. Amen? Amen. So, here we have. Ready or not, the work of the people of God is to what? Prepare for the events of the future, which shall soon come. With what? They're going to come. The Bible predicts that just before Jesus comes, there's some issues that have to be straightened out. One of them is that the world is going to learn that there is a God. They're going to learn. The other thing they're going to learn is that it's not Mother Nature, it's Father God. Nature works for God. So the world's going to have to learn that. And so we will see that we, as God's people, must get ready because it's going to get very turbulent in the coming days, right? Amen. So we want to know what is, what's tomorrow's news today, don't we? I do. That's right. Amen. Amen? So, we see in the book of Daniel. Now, y'all know these stories. I don't have to read them all, but those are the texts if you want to write them down. I just want to pick out a few highlights. These are two stories. I love them. And I'm going to just casually tell you, you know the stories. One is about Daniel, and one's about three Hebrew boys in the Bible. Well, Daniel was in captivity, and they passed the law that for 30 days, nobody can pray to nobody but to the king. Well, that was a conspiracy because three, uh, uh, some of the guys, his colleagues, didn't like him. So they tricked the king into making this law. And Daniel, you know, so he was a consistent Christian. He didn't change up based on people, place, time, or whatever. He was the same every day. He got in his window. He prayed every day towards Jerusalem. And they counted on him to be faithful. Well, you know the story. He didn't follow that decree. He prayed to God like he did aforetime. And they told the king and reminded the king, you can't change that law. He's got to go into the lion's den. Oh, they threw him down into the lion's den. <clears throat> you know what? Those lions didn't pay down you no mind. You know why? They got a message from God. Don't you, har- don't you harm my servant. That's right. 
that you harm my servant. And the king, he wrestled all night long. He couldn't sleep. He know he was tricked up. How my friend getting to lie there very early in the morning. He said, oh, Daniel, oh, Daniel. It's the God that you serve continually. Here's the key word. Able. Is he able to deliver you? I like Daniel. He's a good mentor for Christians. He was very diplomatic. He says, O king, live forever. You ain't getting this. He's in the lie it did. And he says, O king, live forever. But here's the best part. My God has sent an angel and has shut the lion's mouth. And their teeth were working. Because you know the story later on, the people who did the conspiracy, they got through in there, and the Bible says, as they was coming down into the lion's den, before they reached the bottom, the lion ate them up. No bones left. The, sa the same lions ate them up. All God's creation obeys him. But we got a little problem with, with humans. Humans don't, don't obey God. Amen. That was the story. So another time, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, a big statue, and God was trying to tell him tomorrow's news today. And he told him, you represent the head, and then after you will come another kingdom. But he didn't want that. King Nebuchadnezzar made a big statue, all gold, like, like he's smarter than God. His kingdom never going to pass away. And then he said, I want everybody to come to the dedication. Now watch this. It started out at a dedication. But the Bible says in those verses, when the people got there, it turned into a worship service. And then he says, when you hear the music, everybody's got to bow down and worship. Well, you know the story. There were three Hebrew commandment Seventh-day Adventists who would not bow down. And so the king got upset. He says, look, I'm going to give you another chance. And I like what they said. We're not careful to answer you, O king. We're not going to change. You can give us another chance, but you're not going to change. He says, we are not going to bow down nor serve the image that you have set up. They said, the God that we serve is, what's that word again? Able. Able to deliver us. But, but, see, we don't know the mind of God. But, if he chooses not to deliver us, let it be known, O king, we will not bow down nor serve the God that you have set up. And you know the story. King was besides himself. He threw them into the fiery furnace. The men that threw him in, they lost their life. And the king stood up and said, did we not cast in three? Well, I see four in there. He could count. And one looked like the son of, son of God. He said, you boys, come out of there. And they came out. Now get this. No smell of smoke on their clothes. Their hairs were not singed. What am, I, who, what am I talking about? I am talking about a God who is able by faith in him. So, fast forward. We right here, the year 2021. Jesus asked this question. When the Son of Man come, will he find faith in the earth? That's a problem for Christians. It's a problem because God was concerned about it. He says, when I come, will there be any Christians still believing this? Will he find faith in the word of God? Oh, he's going to find some. I'm one. What about you? You're two? 
three, four. He got, he got his servants. He's going to find some. Not many. Not many. But he's going to find some. And our prayer is that everyone here be in that number. Okay? There's a new Jerusalem in heaven. There are 12 gates, but 14 tribes, Pastor. 14 tribes. What happened to the other two? The Bible says they didn't make it. They were Ephraim and Dan. There's only 12 gates. And all of us are going to go through one of those gates. Because when you read Revelation 7, there are 144 of the tribe of the children of Israel. I don't know what tribe you are, but by now you should have guessed what tribe I am. I'm Issachar. I am, it's, you know, I didn't know what tribe I was. I knew what I like and didn't like and my character. But when I read the word of God, it said Issachar were people who knew what God's people should do. That's right. Thank you, Mark. See, you need to help me. See? God has given us all. We all are in some tribe, some place. And I hope we're not in the two. When we get to heaven, you're going to go through the gate that is your character. Here's the good thing about it. All these tribes were sinners. They had issues. They're all sinners. But the good news is they all, all overcame. Whatever the issue was, they all overcame. And one day in heaven, we're going to go through those gates. Amen? Amen. God's plan for Seventh-day Adventist members. Voluntarily leave the city and town. God has told us through the prophets. Oh, maybe I didn't clear that. In the Seventh-day Adventist church, we have prophets. 1 Corinthians 14, the Bible says, once again, it's the Bible, let the prophets speak, two or three, and you just evaluate whether it's truth or not. Let the prophets speak. Amos 3.7, the Lord won't make a move until he tell his prophets what he's going to do. It is the prophet that distinguishes God's only true church from all the other churches. They don't have a clue of tomorrow's news today. God said he's going to reveal the secrets to his what? Prophets. When you're in a warfare, which we're in, you must have good intelligence. You must know what the enemy is going to do, will do, and maybe will do. God gives it to us. Here's one right here. God says again and again, the Lord has what? Instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the what? Country. For where? Where they can do what? Why must they raise their own produce? For in the future, the problem of buying and selling is going to be a serious one. Now, God said you can leave voluntarily or you can wait till the National Sunday Law comes. It's coming. And then you will not be able to buy or sell unless you worship on Sunday, which is the beast day. The whole world is going to be tested on truth or error. Right. The whole world is going to be tested on the true God or on the false God. Right. The false God is called the man of sin. Right. The false God is called the son of perdition. Right. And you and I are going to face it. We are speeding as I speak toward the mark of the beast. This country is, is on a tailspin. It is turning so fast you and I will not be able to keep up. Because we are headed for the time, ready or not, Jesus is coming. Get ready, get ready, wake up, shake up, or do whatever you have to do. Jesus is coming, and the only problem we have, you got to get it right. Got to get it right, can't do it wrong. 
If you follow directions to your destiny, you don't follow the instruction, most likely you're going to get lost. Because you don't know where you're going. Amen? So God has told us what to do. We're going to have to, for about a short period, live on what you can grow. The grocery stores are going to be empty. Because when they hear there's trouble come, a hurricane, anything, you know what happened. Even toilet paper is gone. You didn't hear what I said. The shelves are empty. But if you know tomorrow's news today, you can be reasonable and do what God says. Prepare for in the future, the problem of buying and selling is going to be a serious one. Boy, God, he loves us. He wants to minimize, that's the word, minimize our suffering. But we just got one problem. We won't listen. So, if you don't obey God, who will you obey? Have we forgotten Satan's plan for some of the members now living in the cities and villages? Here's what the prophet says. Listen to Satan. See, when you're on God's side, God can do what you can humanly do. God knows Satan's plan, and God allowed the prophet to listen in on Satan's logistics. And here's what Satan says. But our principal concern is to silence this sect of Sabbath keepers. We must excite popular indignation against them. We will enlist great men and worldly wise men upon our side and induce those in authority to carry out our purposes. Then, the Sabbath, which he calls what? Sunday. There's thousands and millions of people think that Sunday is the Sabbath. It is not. It is the sign of the beast. We know that because we follow the word. Then the Sabbath which I have set up shall be what? Enforced by laws the most severe and exacting. Then those who disregard these laws shall be what? Shall be what? Driven out from the cities and villages and made to suffer hunger and privation. The time is coming, brothers and sisters. You're getting tomorrow's news today. That if you don't listen to God, there's only one other person you're going to listen to. And Satan says, when I get this law, this Sunday keeping forced law, which is the mark of the beast, I'm going to drive all you Christians out because we don't want to be around you. Don't you know? People don't want to hear religion today. No, I don't want to hear the religion. No, no, no. Well, when this law comes, it's at, almost at the end of time. The devil says, you, you don't go voluntary when Jesus say go? Okay, you're going to go involuntary when he force you out. Because the world is moving to the point where every imaginative man heart is evil continually. And I've been around some people. No, I don't want to hear no religion. I don't, you know, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to. They don't want no God, Pastor. That's right. They don't know. You have to be sympathetic to them. They don't know what they are turning down. Amen. They don't have tomorrow's news today. You're trying to give it to them, but they won't take it. Right. We're at a point, sorrowful, but we're at a point where it's very hard to reach people. They done heard so much that they don't want to hear nothing. Are oh, you listening to me? People are there. They don't want no soliciting, no nothing, no parking, no nothing. And they don't know. Ready or not, Jesus is coming. But guess what? Here's the good part. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. And here's the better part. And no man can pluck them out of my hand. Right. Amen. Don't get no better than that. 
If you are one of God's sheep, you're in good shape. You will follow what God says regardless of who says opposite. And the sheep know their shepherd. So when you hear the word of God speaking to you, if you're God's sheep, you should know his voice. So, you know, all I can say is get ready. But get out of the cities and towns because here's the reason. The earthquakes are going to come. The floods are going to come. And the reason why they're coming God is not going to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. So if he don't apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah, he's not going to apologize to these wicked cities. But he's long-suffering to us word. Because he don't want nobody to perish. That's why he's, he's real patient. But there's a time when patience will run out. Are you, are you listening to me? Even God has a limit. Are you ready to meet Jesus? The Ten Commandments spoken by Jehovah from Sinai. Cannot live in the, what? Hearts of persons of what? Disorderly, filthy habits. In other words, I'm going to abbreviate. it. You can read it, but I'm going to tell you what it says. If you're going to worship God, who made the heaven and the earth, God takes note of how you appear before him. You know what I'm talking about? If you were to meet the president or somebody great, would you put on your old work dirty clothes and go down there to meet him? Hello? You would? That would be a dishonor to whoever you're going to meet. Well, God says, see, we must be retooled and reformed and everything else that when you go to a job, maybe this will help, but give you some parables. When you go to a job, the guy says, well, when you work here, you get to wear this green uniform. Now, you have two choices. You can wear the green, green uniform or you don't have to work here. Is that right? So God has a standard too. If you say you love God and he's your all in all, he says, look, when you come to appear before me, you need to be properly attired. And I don't have to tell you what it says. You can read what it says. God, he said, if you don't, you disgrace his day. You disgrace his house. We don't want to do that, do we? So I don't have to say too much about that. Let's move right along. Y'all read it. If not, take down the quotation. You can read it later. Are we ready to meet Jesus? We must be in health to withstand the rigors of the last day. You must be in health. The whole world is health-minded. Everything is health, health, health. We are not our own. We are brought with a price. It's like God lends you these bodies. And you are under stewardship to take care of them. Right. It's like your car. You wouldn't dare pour water into you through your tank, would you? No. no. So your body is your vehicle. For ye have been brought with a price. We are obligated to take care of our health. So that we can have clear minds and understand truth, the word of God. We must not fear and reverence what the world reverence, because they have a different God than we have. Amen? We follow the God who, when he promised, he's able to fulfill. Amen? Now, I'll give you another parable, because this, I like to make it very clear. If I told you right now, everybody here, everybody here, I'm going to give you a billion dollars. You laugh at me, right? You know it's not in my capacity, right? But when God says something, you know he can do it. He owned the cattle upon a thousand hills. Lord, when Moses went to eat, he said, who shall I tell them sent me? Just tell them I am that I am. Whatever you need, 
I am. Whatever you want, I am that I am. But we don't see that. We don't see that God wants his people to prosper. And you know the rest of it, right? What's the rest of the, the truth? And be in health. That's what God wants us to do. So it's no problem. We all make mistakes in life, but we need to shake ourselves up and start going to the next level so that we can be ready when Jesus comes. He's coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. He's not coming for people who, like Cain, do stuff his way. Oh, God ain't concerned about this. Is he going to accept my grapes and whatever? No, God didn't say bring no grapes. Hello? We must learn to do exactly what God says we should or should not do. Amen? So these are some things that we want to meet Jesus. We got we to do a little house clean, a little spring clean, a little straighten up. Now, real quickly, because my time's running out. God has laid out the whole blueprint from 2021 until the end of time. It's called the third coming. Do you know Jesus is going to come a third time? First time he was in the manger. Second time we're looking for him. And then when we go to heaven for 1,000 years, he's got to come back and he's going to bring the new Jerusalem. He's going to bring the new Jerusalem. And then all those who had their way of doing things, they call it the great white throne judgment. He's going to have a great white throne judgment. And everybody will see where they got derailed, got deceived and went off. But it's too late. It's too late then. So it's divided into four blocks. First block is when God brought his last day church on the scene. God, in the Bible, there are seven churches. We're called Laodicea, in case we might have some new people. God says we're not hot and we're not cold. We're just here. That's a problem. And he says, no problem. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, try to find raiment. God has a, a, a remedy for us to, to do better. Okay? And then the next box is we see probation clothes. That's called the end of the world. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 says, When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Don't fall into this trap. Listen very carefully. The end of the world occurs before Jesus comes. It's like a court. You get sentenced before you go to jail. So everybody's case, right now, the judgment sit and the books are open, and God's going to evaluate everybody, every opportunity, what you had or didn't have, and at some point in time, he's going to say, it's over, it's done. And when he stands up, Probation for humanity is closed. Ready or not, he's now coming to give a reward to everybody who heeds the counsel, put faith in the message, and got ready. That's simple. It ain't rocket science. If you go home today and they say a hurricane is coming, everybody get prepared, right? So if you know Jesus is coming, what should you do? Get prepared. Take it serious. Put faith in the message. Ready or not, he is coming. Amen? Ready or not, here I come, Jesus says. And we want to be with those who are prepared and waiting for him. We want to be with those who are out of the city out of the, the, the places of vice and crime and so forth and so forth. We want to be ready. Amen? Amen? So, you have to read Revelation 13. I'm not going to go through it because time. I'm going to close out here. But maybe sometime in the future we can go through another session and finish this. But the Lord sets that up. Amen? But... We're going to close on this slide. There are things you need to know as you read Revelation 13. Revelation 13 is the attempt of the beast 
to fight against God. Okay? Babylon. Any organization that don't accept Jesus, whether it's the papacy, apostate Protestantism, or spiritualism. Here's a rough one for most people. Jesus says you can't serve two masters. If you're not on Jesus' side, you're into spiritualism. You are controlled by demons. Are you listening to me? You got two choices. Either Jesus or you're into spiritualism. And if you read Revelation 13, you will see that the majority of the world is following the beast or his image or his mark or his name or they don't go to church. They're still into spiritualism. Okay? And so we see the beast, according to the Bible, first beast in Revelation 13 is the papacy. The papacy thinks it's God. It says it can forgive your sins. Oh, pray, brothers and sisters, that if you confess your sins to a man, it won't hit the ceiling. It goes nowhere. Can you imagine all the people who have been deceived in this world, generation after generation, who followed the beast? All the people, their prayers went nowhere. We'll discuss that later. The image to the beast, that's a proposal where church and state should come together. When church and state come together, you get persecuted, I get persecuted, because we was now following the dogma of the church and state combination. Church and state should ever stay apart, because if they come together, you might not pray the way I want you to pray. So I'm going to persecute you. But as long as they stay, stay apart, you can follow Romans 14.5. Every man is fully persuaded in his own mind. And you have what is called by the forefathers of this country, freedom of conscience. You must follow your own conscience. The beast and the image, they lost their conscience. They don't have a conscience. I can share with you sometime in the future. You don't ever want to have the beast in your forehead. But you're going to see that they are controlled by another power. Real quickly, as I close out, the image of the beast. If church and state ever come together, you have an image of the beast. As they're proposing it now, you have an image to the beast. Okay? The mark, we believe as we progress today, this is today's hot news, breaking news. Our president wants to get everybody vaccinated by May. You heard that. You see it on the news, right? The Pope said everybody in the world should be vaccinated. Well, the Bible says in Revelation 13, he causes all to receive a mark. This mark is not the mark of the beast. This mark is a compliance issue. You and I are going to be forced to either comply or not comply. And based upon whose side this system is on, you're going to get the mark of the beast. Not a mark you can see, but the angels of God can see whether you are obedient or disobedient. So God sends a warning as I close. If any man worship the beast or his image or receive his mark or his name or his number, the same shall drink of the wine, the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, no mercy, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Whosoever worships the beast or his image or receive his mark. We as seventh day Adventists are here to warn the world. Don't have nothing to do with the beast. Don't have nothing to do with his image. Don't receive his mark. But we will let the Holy Spirit, let them make their own decision. Never force anyone. God don't want no forced worship. That's right. Anybody who try to force you to worship is a false religion. That's right. We don't want it. So this is just a sneak preview of coming attraction. But brothers and sisters, ready or not, Jesus is coming, and 
as reasonable humans, we need to get ready to find out what is true, to find out where God's true church is, to become a part of God's remnant family, and get ready. Amen? Let's have prayer as we close, and then we can follow through again. Father God, we thank you for your Sabbath day. We thank you for your message that you have given us. We pray that we will listen to you, for you are the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you, God the Father, for sending Jesus to be in our stead. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit, who's here today, and our guardian angels as they prepare us for the earth made new. Amen. Amen.